I always feel so weird with this thing, but we'll see how this works. Camera system initial. So what I asked you to do on this was the even problem plus, and I really want to try to spell out a lot of little um, things inherent in doing these kind of problems. There, even if you're really good at these problems, very often you do things you're not exactly 100% sure why they work the way they do. So for example, the very first problem here, this is on page 69 in the little blue book. Uh, the very first problem here is a multiplication problem. Now the idea with this is the fact that you're good. Uh, the idea with this is the fact that there's multiplication there and these bars of course represent division. So the basic idea with multiplying fractions is you just multiply straight across. And at the same time you have this sometimes almost competing idea of I want to reduce fractions somewhere. Right? Normally we reduce them at the end of a problem, but this is a really good place to reduce them before I start doing anything. So I don't get these ginormous numbers. So it would still work. In fact, let me let me do something a little more general here. Let's see if I got some white space to work with. This might help us when we come up against um, um, uh, reducing things with variables in them. If I have somebody help me out now. If I had eight over sixteen, what does that reduce to? Yeah. And now really, really analyze why that is. This is 8 over, and 16 is 8 times 2. So I do have 8 divided by 8 times 2. So hopefully it's very obvious that these guys desperately want to go away. And in fact, 8 divided by 8 is 1. And that's why at the end you just end up with 1 half. And another whole different way to look at it is, 8 is 1 half of 16, so 8 sixteenths represents half of something. I mean, that's the other way to look at this, this fraction. <coughs> anytime, anytime I have, uh, if I add this, 8 over 8x, what would that become? Okay. Oh, no, There's not a damn thing different between that problem and the problem we just did. I desperately want you guys to understand. On the first problem, I was a lot more specific. I said the factor was 2. One on the bottom one, I don't tell you what the factor is, but the math doesn't care. Math doesn't care what's there. It says the 8's cancel, leaves you with 1, and whatever's still alive is still there. It's but isn't that 8 times x? Yes. They're together. Good. So if I had, um, let me see if I can make this make more sense. If, if I had 8x over 8, I understand your question. Then your question wouldn't really be as imperative because now this is like 8 times x divided by 8. It's very obvious the 8's cancel. If I multiply something by 8 and then divide it by 8, I basically didn't do a dang thing to it, right? But when I turn it over, that's where it gets a little bit more confusing when you start talking about the operations inherent. Because if I rewrite this, this would be 8 divided by 8 times x. You guys kind of with me? Not at all. All right, I appreciate that. Um, if I say this in English, this is 8 divided by 8x. That's exactly how I rewrite this, 8 divided by. Why do I need the parentheses in there to show that that 8x is on the bottom? So I, I don't want to get too deep into this, but to answer your question, Marco, this would be the same thing as 8 divided by 8 divided by x. Because I would divide both of these things. I can do 8 divided by 8. What's 8 divided by 8? 1. 1. What's 1 divided by x? I have no idea, so I just represent it as 1 over x. Cool. So any factor that's the same on the top and the bottom 
Math does not care what the hell that thing is. But anything that's the same on the top and the bottom can go away. Independent of which top and which bottom it's on, as long as it's across or up and down from each other, they can cancel because they're opposite operations. So coming back to the actual problem we have. Where is it? There it is. This number two here. I could do, and I'm going to do this two different ways. I could do five times one is five. Eight times fifteen, one twenty, and then I have to reduce that, and that has suddenly gotten much worse of a reducing problem. So I would rather not do that. You can still do it. Five goes into five once. Five goes into one twenty. How many times? Twenty-four. Good. So you could get it that way. Now I'm hoping you guys see that that's not, in general, the best way to go. The better way to go is to realize, yeah, I've got 5, and this 15 is 5 times 3. So what cancels right from the beginning? Yeah, these 5's cancel. Cool. So what's left alive? 1 on top, and i got an 8 times 3 on the bottom. 24. 24, I love it. That's the much better way to go in general. Cool. So that's more than really just a suggestion. It will still work. If you just multiply straight across and then reduce, it will work. But it will become much more disgusting than it has to be. Uh, number four, the same kind of way. In fact, number four is almost the same problem. It's kind of funny. They just added an extra factor up here, 16. So now I can do the same thing. Five's on the top. 15 is 5 times 3, so again the 5's cancel. 8's on the bottom, 16 is 8 times 2, so they're the same way, the 8's cancel, so what's left alive? Yeah, 1 times 2, 2, 1 times 3, 2 thirds. 2 thirds, I like it. How are we doing so far? A semi decent? I've actually never been taught that way. It just makes it so much easier. What's that? I've never been taught it that way. It so really? Easier. Yeah. Because I've always been taught to do it the other way and then reduce. Like, that's like so much. That's insane. Yeah, I don't know. And, and um, I see where I have my work here. Real quick, if, if, if I do this, the whole idea is if I have, for example, if I have, um, uh, what do you got, Jeff? I don't know. If I had, 98 over 35, and I had to reduce that. This would be a problem where we probably would show ourselves what the hell's going on, because I, I can't, 98, 35, I'm like, that's, I don't know what the hell. So I'd probably start to break it up. Now go with me here for a while. Just stay with me. Um, 98, how can you break that up? What definitely goes into 98? Two. Two. 98 is twice what? 100 is twice 50. You with me? So 98 is two less than that, half of that one is, so 98 is twice 49. Is it 9 plus 9, 18? It would end in an 8. So 98 is 2 times 49. 35 is who? Yeah, 5 times 7. Yep. 7 goes into 49, 7 times, so you end up with 2 times 7 over 5. Now, the purpose for me showing you this problem like this is if I had 2 sevenths times 49 fifths, if my problem started off like this, yes, that? <coughs> like that? Yeah. Cool, thank you. Uh, so if I had 2 sevenths times 49 fifths, if you did multiply, I'd have to multiply that and I'd have to multiply that. You with me? Now, now all I've done there is I've, I've written the multiplication. I haven't actually done it yet, right? Because I don't feel like I'm my aspirin. But don't you see how that's the same thing as the second step of doing this? So this is really fundamentally. I, I understand some of you guys, and I, I totally um, 
respect you if you think, why the hell am I allowed that and that there, not over each other? Well, yes, they would be. They would be over each other if you went ahead and multiplied them out. So that's why I'm completely allowed to cross-reduce like that. Because they would end up over each other. Cool. I know some of you guys are really good with these fractions. That's awesome. Enjoy yourself. Have a great time. It's great. Just hang out. Yes? Can't. I love it. Why does cross reduction work here? Because you have, it was the only time that things will cancel when the operations in there are opposites. If I had 2 sevenths plus 49 fifths, well, now I have division and addition. I can't cancel. You have to get an even. And that, of course, exactly. That's another thing I can't blame students for. If I saw, uh, where are you, Jeff? There you go. Two sevenths <coughs> plus 49 fifths. My brain would say, dude, just do it. It would make it so much easier. Just cancel those. But you got to stop your brain and say, dude, brain, this is addition, this is division. I'm not allowed to cancel a damn thing there. Nothing will cancel there because I don't have opposite operations. So when you first learn this kind of stuff, you probably kind of, on the surface, you feel like, they keep teaching us stuff, and then they tell us it's different for this. And then they, and then it keeps changing. Math keeps changing. Math never changes. You have to realize, what's the basic idea here? Opposite operations cancel. So if you try to say you can cancel something, you better make sure that you have opposite operations. I don't have that. You guys with me? Yes, sir. Um, when, like, during in, in multiplication, can you, like, let's say, like, you know, you can cross, you can cross, like, Cross reduce. Reduce. You can also you can, over the always straight up and down. Yes. Yeah. Okay. The, the only thing that multiplying adds in is the option to cross reduce. You can always up and down reduce. Okay. With me. That's always there. But when I have two things multiplying, it adds in the possibility of cross reducing also. So if I had a problem like this, um, what do you got, Jeff? I don't know. 14 over 8 times, oh, you could do something, Jeff. Again. 20 over 7. <clears throat> Excuse me. Oh, thank you. Thank you. Um, I could, if I wanted to, right here say 2 goes into both of those 7 and 4. Is that cool? I could certainly up and down reduce. And then I could start going, oh, look, the 7s go away and the 4 goes into 25. Do you, do you kind of follow the logic there? You can, you can, you can cross-reduce. You can up and down reduce. You cannot, unfortunately, you cannot do this. Now here the answer would be, what's the only thing left alive? Five. 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 And it's on the top, right? So that would be five over one or just five. Now the, the most common mistake I see here is when I get a problem like nine over eight times nine over four, and people start going, oh, nine goes into nine. Yay, and eight goes into four twice, and I get one half. Whoa. <coughs> right, no way. So you can do up and down, you can do across, but obviously you can't do straight across like that. Straight across is straight up multiply. How the hell can you suddenly say, oh, I'm going to divide straight across now? Not going to work. How are we doing there? Is that decent? All right, so let's come back to this page here. Because the next problem is where we hit our most, uh, our first real big, I think, uh, issue last time. And now I'm hoping that you guys start to look at this the right way. You can take any variable to a power and just really, that's y times y. So what happens with the y's? Cross one out. Yeah, one of them, that y is the same as that y. They're going to go away when I divide them. So how many y's are left alive? <coughs> Where? I love it. And what happens with the 9 and the 3 there? 1, 1, and 3. three. So then you say, okay, there's a 1 over 3y. So some of you guys, your problem is not going to be that you don't understand the thing. Your problem is going to be you're at least as messy as I am, and you forget somebody that survived. <coughs> you leave them behind on the island with the zombie. It's not good. You want to bring everybody that survives with you, right? I watched too many movies now. All right, so that's, that's multiplication. That's what you've got to be careful about with... Uh, variables. Variables actually make it easier in a way. They're already factored. So I'm running out of white space on this dude. Let me see.
Let me, let me show you a couple variable problems real quick in a row here. Um, where is it at, Jeff? <coughs> this thing is way too big. There it is. Look at me there, right? Okay. Let's change the brightness, Jeff. All right. Uh, if I had, for example, just looking at variables here, really, if I had y cubed over y to the fifth. Now, you can, y cubed is y times y times y. y to the fifth would be? 5y. 5y, so y, 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 y. So how many cancel? Three. Three. One, two, three. How many are left alive? Two. Where? On the bottom. On the bottom. On the bottom. One over y squared, yeah. But do you see how you really don't need this step? Looking at the original one, how many would cancel? Three. How many more does this have? Two. So they're left alive on the bottom. Three Ys kill each other. Two are left on the bottom alive. Thank God I don't have to do this step because what if I had this? What if I had M to the 78 over M to the 84? I do not. M, M, M. <laughs> Right? How many are left? How many cancel? Because they, they both have at least 78 M. So those 78 M just kill each other. How many are left alive? And how do you know there are six left alive? 84 minus 78. I like it because there's six more on the bottom. 84 minus 78. There's six more of them on the bottom. So they're still alive. <coughs> so I get one. 78 died. But there were six extra on the bottom. So that's what's left alive. That's really the fundamentally the same thing that we do when we see 3 over 9. If I wrote 9 as what a variable would look like, 9 would look like 3 <coughs> squared. Right? Right. And then I go, oh, 1, 3 cancels with one of these 3's. There's 1, 3 left alive on the bottom. I can look at numbers the same way we do variables if I wrote, ver if I wrote the numbers in factored form. So realize this, the variables are actually easier they're already factored. They can't help you be factored because you can't actually multiply them because you don't know what the hell they are. So they're easier. Okay. Then we get to division. And is division really different? No. Fundamentally, no, it's not different. You just got to not forget the first step. Don't just start to multiply and think you can cancel those twos out. It's not multiplication yet. It's not opposite. How do you make it multiplication? Look, uh, yeah, flip this guy around. So times 3 over 2, right? Is that cool? So to do division of fractions, you multiply by the reciprocal. And now, can the 2's cancel? No. Hell no. 1 times 3 is 3. 2 times 2 is 4. 3 fourths. Now, let me see if I can take this major aside. If I take a number and divide by a big number, that gets smaller. Are you with me? So if I take 10 and divide by 5, it becomes 2. It gets smaller. If I take 10 and divide by 2, it's 5. It gets smaller, but not as small. If I take 10 divided by 1, it stays the same. So if I take 10 divided by a number less than 1, it's now going to get bigger. So if I take uh, 10 divided by 5, I get 2. If I take 10 divided by 2, I get 5. The answer is getting a little bigger because I'm dividing by less and less. If I take 10 divided by 1 is 10. So that's where it, that's kind of like the point where it's, it's not small anymore, it's the same. So if I divide by a little bit less than 1, the answer should logically be even bigger. So if I take 10 divided by 1 half, let's write that a little bit better. 10 times 2, now it got bigger, yeah. You guys got it with me? And one physical way I thought about doing this before was if I see half a box and I see 10 things in it, right, and they say the box is evenly distributed, then I'd say how much total things must be in that box then? 20 things. If there's 10 on that side, if there's 10 on that side, there must be 20. So that's really physically what 10 divided by 1 half means. Because what's 10 divided by 5 mean? I have five boxes, and I want to put ten things in all the five boxes. How much, how much does each box get? Two. So somehow, ten divided by one half must be half a box gets ten of them. So what's the whole box get? Twenty. 
You guys kind of with me? It's always good to be able to base operations on physical reality. 10 divided by 5 is easy. From day one, when you first learned it, five boxes, you got 10 apples, you put them in there, you each get two. Wow. But I can do the same thing with a freaking fraction. If half a box has 10, the whole box has 20. That's why this makes sense. It matches what we see in, in reality. Thank God. Every now and again. So let's see here. Number 10, the same idea. Right? Don't do this right off the bat. It's really tempting. But instead, what do we do? The first guy stays the same. And the second guy becomes 6 over 1. Six over one. And then you multiply across. There's nothing common here. There's nothing I can reduce anywhere. So it's 6 times 6. 7 times 1. Yes, sir. Now, couldn't you put that as like a mixed number? Yes, you could. If you wanted to write that as a mixed number, 7 goes into 36 5 times with 1 left over 7. If it was 35, it would have gone in seven, uh, five times. Five times. Yeah, I forgot which one it was worth. If it was 35, it would have gone in five times. It went in five and a little extra because it's not 35, it's a little extra. Uh, finally, real quick, number 12 is basically the same idea. Flip this dude. So 1 fifth times 1 fifth, 1 25th. And really, what that says is if I take 1 divided by 5, and then divided by 5 again, I've actually divided by 25 total, haven't I? If I cut something in 5 parts and I cut it in 5 parts again, I've cut it into 25 parts. That's all that's trying to say. Now here's another way that variables can kind of sneak their way in. It's just giving us an expression to evaluate, right? So you just rewrite this using x and y that they give us. So x divided by y, x is 2 thirds, y is 3 fifths, and then you just attack that. How do you rewrite that so you can do it? Yeah, 2 thirds times 5 thirds. <coughs> Resist the temptation. You can't make this go away. What does that become? 2 thirds times 5 thirds? 10. Nice. I do get every now and again somebody tells me the answer is 10 thirds, and what do you think they're thinking about? It's like a like denominator. They're thinking addition, but the, the bottom, this is multiplication. Everything just gets multiplied. Right. Because in that problem, how many divisions of 3 are there in that problem? It's a kind of a weird question, but in this problem, how many times is something being divided by 3? Twice. So if I want to consolidate it, I say, okay, divided by 3 twice is the same as dividing by 9. Okay, maybe, maybe. Seems so far away. Okay. Now this one, and again, this is this whole idea, and believe it or not, I say the same thing to my like one of my pre-calculus students. I tell them the same damn thing. I say, math doesn't really care what's in there. There's a lot of processes in math, and it just doesn't care if it's a fraction, it doesn't care if it's a square root, it doesn't care. So how do you always check a solution to an equation? Like you just plug know. it in. I don't care that this fraction. I will care on the next step, because then the next step will be actually do what it says to do. But right, I don't care that it's fractions. It doesn't change what I do. I just plug that thing in. Is 10 a solution? I plug it in. Is 3 fifths times 10 equal to 2 thirds? I'm going to do 3 fifths times 10. You can make 10 over 1. <coughs> and then 5 goes into 10. Twice, 2 times 3 is 6, so not 2 thirds. So is it a solution? No, no, because no, it does not make it work. It makes it 6, not 2 thirds, like the equation requires. So 10 cannot be a solution. Okay. There's one last little problem on here, and I've got to unzoom a little bit just to fit it in there. <coughs> So a picture's frames width is two-thirds of the frame's length. So two-thirds of the length. The length is 18. So two-thirds of 18. 
And who remembers what is of me? Time. Multiply. If you're talking about percentages and fractions, when I say it's 8% of this or 1 7th of this, I multiply. <coughs> so 2 thirds times 18, and I can always put a whole number over 1. And now you just attack it like normal. What can I do? 3 goes into 18. 6 times. Six times. <coughs> What I get there? 12. 12. 12. I like it. 2 times 6 is 12 over 1. I don't really need that. So it must be 12 inches. Okay, okay. All right, so here's, I think the other side is where the variables become even a little more equal. Like, for example, the very first damn problem. But again, um, math does not care. If I have two fractions, what's the process always when I'm trying to subtract? The first step is to make sure that LCD. the bottoms are the same. You get the LCD on both, right? So I, at the moment, the very first step, I don't care what the hell's on the top. The top could be any freaky ass thing it wants to be. To me, I'm just looking at the bottoms. The bottoms are not the same. How do I make them the same? What would the LCD be, of course? Four. 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 So then how, who's got to change? The two. Yeah, so I've got to multiply him by? Two. Two. So I get 3x over 4 minus? Two over 4. Two over 4. All right, now you got to, now, see, that's done. you got the bottoms the same. Now you worry about what's on the top. And, and, you, and what are you fundamentally doing here? You subtract it. So I get some number of force minus some number of force. So it's going to be some total number of force. What's going to be up here, though? 3x three, three, minus 2, because I don't know what the hell it is. So that's more of a light terms. When you just have pure numbers, you don't have to necessarily worry about light terms, because numbers are always light terms with each other. I can put 4 and 3 together, and 8 minus 7, I can put all that. But here, 3x minus 2, I don't know what the hell it is. I just got to write the whole thing on top of 4. What about number 4? Oh. All right, let's do number 10. This is another one with a variable. So here, now the variable is something I've got to worry about from the beginning because it's on the bottom. Because my first thing I worry about is getting the denominators the same. And, and, and real quick, let, let me do this real quick. Um, I want to show you something. What's the only time that I, I multiply the bottoms? Because I always get people that want to do this 1, 6 plus 1, 8. They want to make the LCD 48. Why is that wrong? Yeah. In fact, here's a little trick I showed somebody that they, under, they liked it. A lot of times when I tell you these little shortcuts, if you don't understand it, don't freak out. You've got another way to do it. What, what number do the both 6 and 8 have in common? Two. 2. So if you know what number they have in common, you can multiply them together and divide by what they have in common. That will be the LCD. That's kind of nifty. Think about it. 6 times 8 is 48. They have a 2 in common. Divide by 2, 24 is the LCD. That will always work. I don't always want to do it because my numbers, I can't necessarily pick out what they have in common all the time, but that's a cool little trick. What's the only time then that the LCD can just be the multiple of those two things, multiplying those two numbers together at the bottoms, is if they don't have anything in common. 7 and 5 have nothing in common, so the LCD there will be 35. There's nothing in common. There's no middleman they can meet at. The first place they meet is the multiple of each other. Is that cool? So what's it got to do with anything, Jeff? I, I don't know. Um, number 10, look at the numbers. Where do the numbers agree? 24, right? Because 8, if you want to do it this way, 8 is 4 times 2. 12x is 4 times 3 times x. Mm -hmm. Make that a little bit. You guys with me? So now you just look at it the same way we did before. What is that first student missing? An x and a 3. So you get those both to him. So that variable is just another thing to consider. Do they both have it? No. Give it to whoever's missing it. Right? One guy had an X and the other guy had a Y, I have to, have to give each of them that other letter. 
because that's something they're missing. So it's the fundamental process. Make sure they both have the same thing at the end. So does that process care if there's variables now? It doesn't give a shit. It says if one guy has X, the other guy better get X too. Right? Nothing to change there. It's the same process as always. It's just like I gotta consider the letters as something they get also. So this first dude, like you told me, gets three times X. And what's this guy missing? A two. A two. So you multiply by two. So what do you end up with on the bottom here? 3x times 4 is 12x times 2 is 24x. And so they're both the same thing. Cool. I'm going to keep them separate for right now. What's on the top of this first guy? Yeah, 3x times 3 is 9x. What's on the top of the second dude? 10. 10. Sweet. Now resist the temptation to cancel those x's. If you did that, what did you just undo? What did you lose? If you cancel those x's, do they have a like denominator anymore? No. So do not. The whole reason is there is so that they have the same bottom. So now I can put them over the same bottom. What's on the top? 9x. Yeah, 9x minus 10, whatever the hell that is. I don't know. Now here's a really good question. Here's the next place where people want to make sick. Can I cancel the x's now? No. Hell no. Right? Because what's being divided by 24x? What's being divided by this? This and this. So if you just cancel it out here, how'd that dude escape? How did he escape from being divided by x? You cannot escape. Right? You have to solve the top. Exactly. And can I solve the top? No. So you got to leave it. That's right. So when you're adding, you have to subtract to get the answer? Say again? When you're adding the numbers, like for number 10, what's adding? Oh, number 10? Yes. Oh, uh, that's this one, right? Yeah. Right. So when I'm adding, uh -huh. oh, why did I put a minus? I'm sorry. Okay. You guys should call me out on it. It's a plus here, right? Yeah. yeah. Okay. Okay. I get so hung up on everything else, I forgot what that thing was in the middle. So yeah, it's plus. Thank you. Thank you. I'm glad you asked that question. Yeah, that middle thing can't change all of a sudden. You're right. I don't care how good you are at math. You can't make addition become subtraction. Um, Number six now, comparatively, should look really nice. What's the one thing you do first to make it follow the process better? You don't make it a fraction. Yeah, three over one. So if you want to, you certainly could write it like this. If that's easier for you to see. Who needs what? Yeah, the one. I want to make it both over five, so I can multiply this guy by fives. And he becomes... 15. 15 over 5. So you leave him alone. Right? He's already got a 5 on the bottom. Right. So 15 of those minus 2 of those. 13. There's 13 of those. So yes, the bottom does not change when you add or subtract. It only changes when you're reducing. If you wanted to, you could write that as a mixed number. 5 goes into 13. Two times, Two times with three, fit. three left over the five. Yeah. Now look at number eight. Where is it? There is. Now, you got to be real careful. I'm not picking on anybody, but I saw a few people tell me that the answer was over 20. No. Can you see where that would have come from? Like maybe somebody told me the answer was 2 over 20. Can you pick out what they did wrong? Yeah, the LCD. yeah they added the bottoms and, the, and they did the tops. You, you cannot add or subtract fractions unless the bottom is the same. It's the same idea as you can't add 7x and 5y because they're not like terms. Two of those things are like terms. I will agree with you. So if you wanted to, you could first consolidate your problem a little bit so you don't have three fractions staring you in the face. What's negative 2 fifths? Plus one fifth. One fifth. Negative one fifth. Negative one fifth. You with me? So you can combine like terms if you want to. Leave your friends behind. Negative two fifths plus one fifth 
is negative one fifth. Now, if you didn't do that, you're fine also. You could make, what would the LCD be here? 10. 10, because they could all become 10. 10 could become 10 just by staying the same. What do you have to do to him to make it 10? Multiply by 2. So then you get negative, negative two, over negative 2 over 10. You with me? Negative 2 tenths plus 3 tenths. One over 10. I love it. And something else I want to say real quick. I, I got the suspicion this might not be true. I never want to accuse anybody of anything. But some of you guys might have certain calculators that actually have fractions. Now, some of you guys didn't realize that even existed, and I'm going to go test for it, look for it. But the minute you find it, you certainly can go, yay, and you can use that to check your work. I don't want things just showing up out of nowhere. The right answer comes out, and I don't see a damn thing that led to it. <coughs> First thing I think is, well, you know your fraction keys. That's good for you, right? It's good for your calculator. It passes. It goes on to Math 90. You take 88 again. It's not good. So you, it's good to check your work with them. I'm not really going to show you how to use them yet. I'll, I'll wait for later semesters. Right now, you should be able to do all this stuff by hand. But if you know the fraction key, that's good for you. Check your work. Don't you dare use that to be your work. Cool? Okay. Uh, let's see. I skipped one on the way through here. Number four. Wow. <laughs> So there is a variable in there, but I don't, again, it's not in the bottom, so I don't care about it at the moment. What's the LCD here going to be? 35. Beautiful, because 7 can become 35. What do you multiply by? 5. 5. 5. 11 over 35 stays the same. What do I get on the top here? Good. 5 times 2x is 10x. And on the bottom, of course, I get the other 35. 35. Good, 11 plus 10x, I have no idea what the hell it is. I'm just going to write 11 plus 10x. Yes, sir? Is that what you I think you said before, does it matter which way it goes on top? Is it supposed to be 10x plus 11 or 11 plus um, 10x? Or? It doesn't truly matter. It is slight convention to always kind of what's called descending order. So you have like highest powers of x all the way down to just numbers. So you'd write like x to the fifth plus x to the fourth plus x cubed plus x. So here it should technically be 10x plus 11. <coughs> but it's not a strong convention, especially when you're just adding fractions. Right? So, so either way you do it, it's fine. Okay. You guys uh, feeling better about some of this? Or, or felt about the same? The same's okay if you felt good about it before. You feel bad about it before, the same sucks. So the, we saw a problem just like this earlier. And it's just another one of these substitution problems. So then you have 3 times x, but x is 1 third, minus y, but y is 1 fourth. Oh, yeah, go ahead. Sorry. And then you just attack it. So the first step is substitute, and then you pretend like that's where you start. And what can you do there? Yeah, the threes cancel. You can put that over one if you want to, but the threes are going to cancel. So you get one minus one fourth. Yeah, you can make that four over four minus one over four. Three fourths. One is kind of cool. One, if, if the LCD is eight, one becomes eight over eight. If the LCD is 11, one becomes 11 over 11. It just becomes whatever the hell you need. One's very useful. Uh, let's see, number 14, same idea, x was one-third, y was one-fourth, and then I just go to town on this, and of course, how do I divide <coughs> fractions? Uh, you want to find, like, Good, so it'll be one-third times four over, one. four over one, I like it. Did you four? Wait, you? Yeah, I did, sorry. I'm sorry. Do it again, say it. What's up? Yeah. Uh, number, you go back to number 12 for one second? Oh, yeah, sure, sure. Yes, long <coughs> So what's up? Nothing. Is that okay? Yep. 
because this is, of course, 1 over 1. And yeah. how do I make it over 4? I multiply it by 4. Yeah, I forgot to multiply it by 4. Gotcha, gotcha. All right, now 14. Now, again, for this whole section, x is 1 third and y is 1 fourth. So when I get down to number 14, I just replace x with 1 third, y with 1 fourth. It's division, so I multiply by the reciprocal. So how do I multiply 1 third times 4 over 1? 4. Good. 1 times 4 is 4. 3 times 1 is 3. Or you can write that as 4 1 over 1 third. One third. Yeah. Either way. Because it didn't really say. Now here's something. Um, how do you do these? You can put less than, greater than, or equal to. How are you going to compare those? You can reduce uh, yeah, cool. Uh, you either try to reduce or you try to build up so they have the same denominator. You can't really compare them too easily unless they do that. Now, I could do something like, what's bigger, 7 eighths or 2 ninths? There's 2 ninths or 7 eighths. Which one do you think is bigger? Because 7 eighths is almost a whole thing. 2 ninths is way the hell away from that. So I really don't need to do that when I have very obvious things like that. 7 eighths is almost full. Two ninths nowhere near full. Seven eighths must be bigger than. This one, I'm not sure until I do something. What can you do? Which one? You can either of those reduce? Yes. Yeah, what does nine over 21 reduce to? Three sevenths. Three sevenths, good guess. Divided by three. So then these two things, of course, are? Equal. 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 What about this guy here? Yeah, this guy reduces to what? Three what now? Three over two. Three over. Now you can divide this by four. You can divide this by four. Three fourths. And what does this guy reduce to? Three fourths. Divided by six. Divided by six. So that equals. That's not very exciting. Six. Oh, 10, sorry. Let's revisit 10 for just a second. Sorry. There's 10 in all its glory. That's all right. Um, it, it, real quick point. This happens all the time with mathematics. I mean, if, if, after we do a problem on the board, if somebody walked in a little late, and they would sit down and they'd look at it, and they're like, oh, holy shit. So, I mean, look back at this. We did this problem step by step together. But when you look at it now, it's like, Look at all that stuff going on. You know, you kind of lose track. So that's really, it's really important. I tell people sometimes when you're doing these, you might want to even cover up. Once you figure out this step, you cover it up. Right? And you cover it up as you keep going. Because very often our, our eyes see what's above it and it kind of brings it into play. What we did before it doesn't matter anymore. We're there now. So you can even just cover that stuff up so it doesn't freak you out. Okay. <coughs> I think the last problem one here was about freshmen. They were merely freshmen. Out of 150 students, one third are freshmen. Find the number of freshmen. You say freshmen and nothing starts getting bigger. One third of 150. Good. Of means multiply. Put that over one if you want to. Three goes into 150. 50 times, so there must have been 50 freshmen. Cool. So, I kind of skipped over questions from homework. Oh, sorry. The last one? No, I can wait for back up. Sorry, I'll put it back up there. Um, while that's coming back up, you guys think about if you have any questions from homework. Yusuf, which one are you looking at? Question there, sir. 
Three number nine. Yeah, that one's a little bit evil. Let's just so to make this uh, set up a little bit better. What can I add in here? Over one, yeah. So the funky thing here is you just got to accept the fact that there ain't a damn thing you can really do except straight up multiply. So three, eight, because nothing cancels here. You can go, the ones cancel, leaving ones, but that would you know, keep doing that forever. Don't do that. So I get three a squared times one over one times four. And, and that's it, yeah. It just feels wrong because you're like, I didn't do anything really. But that's the point of that problem is you can't always do something. Yes, okay, on that same section, you do 18. 18. Oh, yeah, that looks disgusting. Let's see. Anywhere I see something on the top, something on the bottom, somewhere that has a common factor, I can kill it. So I can have a string of like 80 fractions, and I can take the first one and the 78th one and cancel something. You guys with me? You're not going to have that. But here, what's like the first thing that strikes you you can do? I see something very nice. 32 and 16. Yeah, the 16 goes into 32 twice. Good. The 10 goes into 30. Three times. Is that cool so far? And again, what I'm doing right there is if it was 16 over 32, that's 16 over 16 times 2. I'm just canceling that common 16. That's where I get the 1 and the 2. 16 divided by 16 is 1. 32 divided by 16 is 2. 10 divided by 10 is 1. 30 divided by 10 is 3. The more direct way is 10 goes into 33 times, right? If it goes in fully, yeah. What do I mean by that? If I had, um, if I had 16 over 10, what goes into both? Two. Two. So then it would just be whatever's. You know, it won't be a one anywhere. But if it's the actual, the whole thing goes in, then it will just be a one left. Why? Because that thing divided by itself is one. That thing divided by 10 is 3. Cool. So really what I'm doing is you can take any fraction you want, and you can multiply the top and bottom by any damn number you want, except 0. Or you can divide the top and bottom by any number you want. You with me? So that's all I'm really doing is multiplying, uh, uh, sorry, dividing the top by 10, dividing the bottom by 10. So overall, what did I just do? Nothing. I just made it look different. 10 over 30 is the same thing as 1 third. Anything else I could do? Yeah, 3 goes into 27. 
Nine times. So what's the only stuff left alive? Yeah, the nine, the two, and the thirteen, right? So we get nine times one times one is nine. Two times thirteen times one is twenty-six. Cool. What if you didn't see all of those constellations? Well, when you multiply, you'll see something still goes in. Right, so if we would have done this problem and we wouldn't have saw that last thing, well, that would kind of suck a little bit, but then i going to redo this real quick. Let's see. So if we would have done all this, that's a 30, Jeff. One third and one half, Jeff. If we would, but we didn't see that. We would say, okay, 27 over uh, 78, thank you. And now is that really easy to see that something still goes into both? No, not really. So that's another reason why you, you desperately want to make sure that you've got everything before you keep going, because maybe that reduction at the end is not easy. The only way I know that 3 goes into both of these is that 2 plus 7 is 9, and 7 plus 8 is 15. Those are both multiples of 3, so 3 goes into both. I don't know if you remember that. I told you that a while back. How do I know if any number is divisible by 3? Add up all the digits. If it's a multiple of 3, 3 goes in. That's a cool trick. So then this would take one more step, divide by 3, divide by 3, and then I get to my 9, 26, but that's a hard step to take. So don't try to make sure you get everything reduced. Okay, maybe, maybe, maybe. Yes, ma'am. Can you do know what to multiply by 8? Yeah, I What's the very first thing that's, that goes away nicely? One. One. And then you just start kind of, it doesn't, you don't have to get the full reduction on the first step. You just kind of start doing what you can see. So what definitely goes into both of those? Two. two. So two goes into 14, seven, into four, two. So two goes into 144, 72 times. Two goes into 16, eight, into two, one. I'm doing the same little trick now. There's an even better thing here. If the digits add up to be 9, 9 goes in. If they're just a multiple of 3, then 3 goes in. But if they, 7 plus 2 is 9, 8 plus 1 is 9, 9 goes into both. That's 9's neat trick. Right? So if you divide by 9, what do you get? 8 over 9. 8 over 9. Would be that for any number, though? Say again? Wouldn't that be that for any number, though? Not just 9? No. Just nine. I mean, three goes into uh, what did we just do? Uh, three went into seventy-eight. Seven plus eight is fifteen, not three. You see what I'm saying? Nine. If you add up all the digits and it's nine at the end, nine will go. In. It's really cool. So if I had the number uh, one zero eight nine. Um, did you do that right? Yes, Jeff. 1 plus 8 plus 9 is 18. Right? We do that because it doesn't really equal 18. 1 plus 8 is 9. So at the end of if you keep adding and adding and adding all the digits, and at the end you get 9, 9 goes into the original number. Crazy. Crazy. It's just, you know, those are just little offshoots of how we set up our number system. Of course, our number system is not the only thing it could have been. Yes? Uh, 424, page 2, 3, 5, 4, 4, 
Find the LCD. What do you not care about if I'm looking for the LCD? <coughs> the tops. I don't care about the tops at all. All I care about is the bottoms. Do these have anything in common? No. No. So then what's the LCD going to do? 70. Why? When they have nothing in common, you just multiply them, right? Almost too easy, really. You think there's got to be more to it, but these have nothing in common. So what's the LCD going to be? 70 Y. Because what's he missing? Y. What's he missing? 70. So what would it end up at the end? It would end up being 70 Y. When you give them what they're missing, right? Maybe. So you guys look at me like, dude, it's almost spring break. Just like that. <laughs> Here's just one of our Let me out of here. All right. <laughs> I'm a math teacher. We, we don't take those things personally. We have to learn that early. Anything else? Any other homework questions? Okay. Uh, so I want to do a little bit with mixed numbers, and then I'll let us out of here a little bit early. Not crazy early. Four mixed numbers, you really haven't done too much with them yet. And you're thinking, why do we need to, Jeff? Yeah. Just because we do. So, bless you. This is section four. Where am I going? Am I too far ahead? Oh yeah, we're in four. Four six is not part of what we do. If you look at your uh, homework sheet, it's not in our curriculum. You'll get that next semester. Four seven we're in now. Believe it or not, uh, mixed numbers. So if I had three and two sevenths plus one and three sevenths, start off nice. Start off nice. This is nice. You could if you wanted to. You could certainly make them both uh, improper fractions. I'll tell you honestly, sometimes that's easier for some of these kind of problems. But this is not that bad. This is, what, what, what does three and two sevens by itself mean though? I told some of you guys before, but I didn't really say this all in general. What operation is implied in here? Not multiplication. That would be six sevens. And that's not what three and two sevens is. It's addition. That's what you think of when you see this. Three and two sevens. Plus one and three sevens. So can't I just add like terms? Right? That is like terms now. The whole numbers I can add. The fractional parts was over seven. They're like terms. I can add them. Do I really need to do this step then? No. Three plus one, the whole parts, is four. Two sevenths plus three sevenths, five sevenths. <coughs> cool. Is that cool? So, so how can that possibly be worse than that? Well, let's see. Can somebody tell me, if, if you saw somebody, um, let's say that this guy named Joe, he, he says that the answer to a problem was 4 and 11 eighths. Can anybody tell me why Joe is completely wrong about something somewhere? What is wrong with that? The numerator's bigger than the number. Yeah, you're either an improper fraction or you're a mixed number. You are not a mixed improper thing. That's just, you know... Like a mutant thing that we don't want to see. <laughs> Little dude. But what this really means is um, he didn't really get as many eights out of here as he could have. And what I mean by that is, what would this be as an improper fraction? Let's turn it back in. That would be 32 plus 11. So 43 eights. Is that cool? So what he did was, eight doesn't go into 43 four times. <coughs> he had too much left over, didn't he? In fact, when you divide, when you divide 8 into 43, and if you think it's 4, this step should tell